There's a saying that one man's trash is another man's treasure, and this next place we're about to visit really puts that notion to the test. If you're not afraid of a little bit of rustic simplicity, keep watching. G'day Dave! Hey Bryce, how's it going? Good mate, Good and you. look at this place. Oh, yeah. This actually feels like I've stepped back in time right now. Yeah, nice one, eh? It's pretty different. It's, it's really <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Thanks. So, how did you actually come to be here? Oh, well, um, well, my, my friend uh, built this um, in about 2008, and I've um, just slowly been building it up, and I moved in here about um, in 2011. Right. And, um, she was moving out, she had other things to do, so this place came up, so I was like, oh, well, yeah, for sure, I definitely want to live in a little den in the woods. So happy days, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So you say she built this. How did that come about? How did she do that? Um, well, she just, um, she start, I think she moved into the house. Originally, there's a house uh, down the road, and um, she's um, studying, uh, she's an architect, and she did, like, tent designing in university. So um, she wanted to build something um, on a budget and, um, you know, like a well-insulated little space. So I think it cost about $12 to build in the end. No. Yeah, yeah. $12 to yep. construct this whole space? Yeah, it's all made from bits of collected stuff and scrounged and things, so... I think I've spent about a dollar on it since as well. I bought a, a pack of nails from the dump shop and just so I can hang some more bits and bobs up and, you know, just collecting things as you go and... Yeah, here we are. <laughs> I mean, you can talk about affordable housing, but that's really taking things to the next yeah, level, sure, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice, it's, it's, it's actually possible to do, like, a lot of people have troubles with mortgages and stuff, but... You can really like um, you can really if, you, if you're smart and find a nice place to live and um, yeah you can you can do it on a budget for sure. Well, people are a bit shocked. They're like, "Whoa, what's what's this place?" Because I'm not expecting anything to be up squirreled away on the hill. Um, and they come up here and they're like, "What? What's going on here? Like, it's like so, so different, you know?" Because um, it just looks like tarps and stuff from the outside as well at first. When you go inside, it looks like a little Aladdin's cave or something, you know. So, what's this all actually constructed <laughs> from then? Okay, well, it's, it's based on uh, pallets. We've got pallets at the base. Then you've got um, a bamboo structure around, and it's, then it's covered in tarpaulins. And then there's another layer of bamboo inside with an air gap. And then there's all like uh, insulation, like bubble wrap and all blankets and things. And then it's all lined with beautiful blankets inside and stuff. It's, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then I've got a little lean-to here. It's all made from bits of stuff that's been found and reused, all pallets and things, so. We're in Wellington right now, and this is not the warmest of cities. <laughs> Are you okay here in the winter? I've, yeah, pretty good. I mean, it's pretty well insulated. You've got um, a couple of layers of carpet underneath, and like I said, there's all insulation inside. Got a little wood burner inside, and hot water bottle, and a cat, and I'm, I'm my partner as well. I keep warm, but she's away in the UK at the moment. But uh, yeah, I keep warm in here, no problem. Keep the fire going, and hot water bottle, and you're away, you know? By the looks of the setup here, you're also spending quite a lot of time outside. You've got your outdoor cooking mm -hmm. set, and kind of an outdoor kitchen. Yep. How does this all work? Um, I do, a, I have like my breakfast here and I actually have a little house next door I'm friends with and do a bit of sharing and I, we do like communal cooking down there so I don't do all my cooking here, just uh, every, uh, on occasions I'll put some time to myself, I'll just cook outside, I've got a little gas hob if I'm not feeling like putting the fire on, you know, I can make it nice and easy so yeah, it works out pretty well, yeah. <laughs> I think one of the nicest things about this place has to be its location. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely beautiful and serene here, isn't it? Yeah, for sure, yeah. You've got the river there as well, and there's a, actually a little uh, a bathtub next to the river, and you put a you put a fire underneath, and then heat it up, and you can have a little bath in it under the stars. Oh, it's pretty wow. special. You've got to sit on a plank, obviously, because it gets a bit warm. Yeah. And you're like, oh, but, you know, <laughs> it's pretty good. This place here costs twelve dollars to build. Mm -hmm. Does the rent here reflect the cost of the build? Yeah, I, I just uh, pay a bit of money and uh, help out a bit on the land and stuff, so it kind of works out. Yeah. Show me around your space here. What do we have? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's a very basic outdoor kitchen here. Just. Um, Little chopping board and place to wash the dishes. Um, I, I get the water from we have a rainwater collector uh, at the house, and um, I bring it up here. And you really um, are careful with water when you have to bring it up the hill every time. Yeah. I so do. yeah, you just like quite um, quite careful with it. Yeah, it's pretty simple, nice and basic. Uh, not too much stuff, just well a lot of, a lot of clutter, but that's all good. A lot of character. Yeah, I'd yeah. Say. I, like I mean, it, this yeah. it really is yeah. just packed full mm -hmm. of these like these gorgeous relics that also they really kind of remind me of those. Yeah, well, the, the Bushman's huts and Bushman's yeah, sure. cabins, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's no power up here either. I just, um, I have a head torch and, you know, whatever else, and candles and things. I like it like that, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty nice. What's it like living without power? 
Um, I, I quite like it. Um, like I say, I'm quite lucky because I have uh, friends next door. I can use the house and things. So, but I mean, I quite like it. It's it's nice, um, almost like romantic, having a little fire on and candles and just sitting there by the fire. It's really nice. You yeah. can hear the river and things. It's it's pretty special. Do you think there's any advantages to living in a space that doesn't have any connection to the grid or utilities or anything? I think uh, the main advantage is there's no uh, mobile reception here and there's no internet. So you're forced to, to get away from all that kind of technology for a bit and it's, it's quite nice to go, oh, I can't do anything here now, just relax and enjoy it, you know? Um, I suppose it takes a special kind of person. You know, it's not always very easy, you know, like if you just want to turn the heater on, you can't. You've got to collect firewood and you've got to bring water up the hill and things like that so it's not always very easy but um, it's a small sacrifice for living in such a beautiful place and you know like um, you know got no bills rolling in and stuff it just takes takes the pressure off you know it's pretty special yeah well can we have a look inside I'm really keen to yeah, see please what it looks do, like yeah come here make yourself at home all right <laughs> look at this place yeah, thanks it really does remind me of walking into one of those tribal tents or something yeah the Mongolian kind of year to something as well you know yeah Very similar Looking at the place from the outside, I thought that I would still be quite cold in here, mm -hmm. but it is really quite toasty, yeah, yeah, eh? Yeah, it's pretty warm. It's doing a good job of keeping keeping all of the heat in. Yeah, for sure. And I suppose that's mostly thanks to this little guy, yeah, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a really cute stove. Yeah, thanks, yeah. <laughs> now, you actually make these, don't you? So yeah. this is one that you've built yourself. Yeah, this is a, this is for a, a guy. I'm, I'm just, he designed this and built it for him the other day, so just giving it a little bit of a, t bit of a test run, you know? So it's going. Yeah, it's, it's cranking out really well, so very happy with it. It's really interesting to me because in all of the homes that I visit that actually have a fire, they just immediately become the heart of the home, eh? Yeah, it's for sure. such an important feature. Mm -hmm. Sure is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what actually got you into making these wood stoves? <clears throat> well, when I moved into here, I was like, oh, we need to get a, a new burner. We had the old cold range here, but it's got such a small firebox and it just takes such a long time for it to heat up. So I made a little, little box stove myself oh this is great I really enjoyed it. and then all people go oh, I want one as well so just got started tinkering away and here we are just keep building them you know so yeah and the design in here with the material and the bamboo is really gorgeous as well yeah, it's really nice how she's she's done it really well good job with it yeah everything in here with the carpets and the material even the wool here on the wall mm -hmm. it all just makes it feel so cozy doesn't it yeah, it's really nice yeah and then does this space actually close up as well can you close this at night <laughs> yeah there's like a little blanket door that closes over um, quite often I don't I leave it open because I just like to have the fresh air you know and then in the morning I can just look outside and see all the bush and things so gorgeous it's really nice yeah a little woolly hat on if it gets pretty cold hot water bottle so you've got your bed over here yeah that's the one and oh this is on pallets as well yeah so the, the bed's on pallets as well um, yeah it works out all right so little foam mattress on there and I love how there's this little woolen nook which is kind of carved into the tent there as well yeah it's pretty cozy um, yeah, I spent a lot of time actually uh, re rebuilding all the inside because the cat thinks it's a climbing frame and right. climbs up inside and then uses this little bit here as a hammock. Oh no! And it sits up there because it's the warmest spot. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I don't mind too much, but <laughs> it's <not> good. <laughs> if the whole space cost twelve dollars to build, mm -hmm. this must all be materials that were donated or she found or found, donated. Yeah, I'm not too sure, but uh, yeah, just blankets that people leave behind and stuff. Oh, that'll do. That looks nice. So. So maybe she bought one of them, maybe in a couple of dollars, and that's some of the budget, you know? Yeah. I think a lot of the budget was for safety pins, mostly, to hold it all up. <laughs> right. <laughs> the rest of it was just scrounged, so... Wow. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose that is the, the thing with this kind of space. You certainly don't have to spend a lot of money on maintenance either, do you? For sure, yeah. Like I say, I just spent a dollar, I can't remember what it was now, to get some extra nails and things, and yeah, there's barely any maintenance, so... Yeah. Yeah, it's looked after itself, pretty much. Great. Yeah, yeah. Just keep it warm, that's the trick. Just keep it warm to keep the moisture out because um, if you leave it for a while, the moisture can start coming in. So you've got to keep it dry, you know? Yeah. So, so the stove here in the winter is probably going <coughs> just non stop. Well, I have it on most nights, at least for a bit, just, just to keep, get the chill out and keep things dry, you know? Yeah. Because otherwise you get into trouble with, like, um, you know, things getting a bit moist and stuff. So. And you've got a little library space over here? <coughs> yes, we sure do. A little uh, for a nighttime read and they play a bit of guitar and things, so. Yeah, it's really nice, yeah. Great. So, no computer or cell phone up here? <coughs> uh, well, like I said, there's no reception. Sometimes, though, I will come up and I'll bring a movie up here to watch and stuff, so that's all good, yeah. Yeah. You know, look, still got some comforts here, you know, the modern world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got your uh, clothing back here, the yeah, little wardrobe little space. wardrobe, so something to put the clothes and a few knickknacks and stuff, so, yeah, it works out all right. So, what's it like living here? 
it's easy for me to look at this kind of space and go, this is beautiful and remote and cool and fun, but I would have serious doubts over whether or not I would be able to live this rustic long term. Mm -hmm. You've been here for five years now. Yep. How are you managing with it? Is it? How are you finding this space in the long run? Oh, I love it. It's great. It's um, it's, it's pretty special. Um, I feel really lucky to have the opportunity to live in a space like this. You know, most people never even got the opportunity or even think about it. You know, but um, for me, living in a den in, in the woods is is brilliant. You know, I love it. And I guess that's really what it comes down to. Eh? It really is just about about your own personal comfort levels. Mm -hmm. Because everyone is different, everyone does have different needs. And I suppose the reality is that we've been taught to think that we need a lot more than we really do. For sure, yeah. And I think it's when you come back to places like this that you can really actually kind of connect with what our real needs are, eh? For sure, yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Here in Wellington, mm -hmm. you guys get some pretty harsh weather. How does this place actually hold up when you have those big storms and things? Oh, well, yeah, it gets pretty rough down here. We've had uh, trees falling down the road and power cuts and all kinds of stuff, but um, this place has been fine, no problem at all. Just going to make sure we cut the trees at the back so we don't have anything, fall uh, anything falling down. But, um, yeah, it's held up really well, so, yeah, no problem at all. It's got a lot of trees all the way around it, so, um, yeah, it's got a good bit of shelter from all directions, so right. it's held up fine, no problems at all. So you never have problems with the weather lifting up the tops no, or No, nothing at all. You'd be amazed. It's just, like, it just holds down really well. There's ropes all the way over it as well to hold it all down as well to make sure. Right. Mm. And what about super torrential rain here? <clears throat> oh, it's just lovely with the sound, you know? Um, never, like I said, I've never had a drop of water in here, so... It just sounds really good on, 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 the, on the taps, trickling down, and it's really nice. What about bathroom facilities? <clears throat> oh, I've got a little uh, compost toilet as well. I suppose I'm, I'm really lucky that I've got the house next door, because otherwise it would be a struggle with like hot showers and like socialising and things you're out in the bush, but I think I'm, I'm pretty lucky that I've got the house next door to have all the facilities there that I can use, so uh, otherwise it would be, I probably wouldn't have lived here for so long, I don't think. Or, or, or I would have probably built some kind of thing for heating up a shower and stuff and had some bigger antennas for the internet and stuff, but it's quite nice to have the little balance, you know? I don't think it's for everybody, if I'm honest. Um, you know, if it's cold, you can't just flick the heater on or go and have a hot shower. You, you've got to go and collect the firewood. If you want a, a drink of water or wash, you've got to carry the water up the hill um, and things like that. And like the, the wildlife that comes in as well, you get like hedgehogs coming in sometimes. And like the other morning I was, I was asleep and this, this, I looked up and there was a possum right there in my face, like, oh, bloody hell! And I think it gave him a fright as well. He's like, look, trying to see what, who I was, you know? I was like, oh, it's a bit of a shock. But uh, yeah, so there's things like that, you know? But, um, you know, I think, well, it's not for everybody, but, you know, for some people it could be a really nice situation. Dave, this is such a special place. The idea that this home cost $12 to construct and has been such a comfortable space for you to live for five years now mm -hmm. completely <coughs> blows my mind. <laughs> I have never heard of anything like that before. Cool. But thank you so much for showing me around. Oh, good, Bryce. Thank you. When I first saw this place, I really didn't quite know what to think of it. It's really easy to look at the structure and just see it as a whole bunch of quite random materials that have been thrown together to create a home. But really, that's kind of the point. This has actually become a home. It's warm, it's comfortable, it's dry, and it costs $12 to build. That is just a mind-boggling figure when you think that this is actually a very functional home for Dave. I really don't know what to say other than that that's very impressive.